What's good, y'all? Your boy Brandon back again. Another episode of the On Run Podcast, man. This week we have a fan favorite. Happy to welcome him back. Second time on the show, man. Soral Bell in the building. What's going on, man? Appreciate you giving us your time, man. Yes, of course, of course. You know yeah. your family, man. Appreciate it, man. A lot has happened. A lot has changed. Uh, you were on the show a year ago, and we were just talking while we were setting up about how fast the year goes by. We were talking about, I was like, man, so was the last time I seen you? And it feels like it hasn't been that long because we talk all the time on DMs, but right. then we really sit down and think, and like, man, it's been a lot of months. It's been a minute. Y'all in a new studio and everything. Everything, yeah. It's going crazy. Yeah, proud yes, of sir, yes, sir. Appreciate Super it. Super proud of y'all. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to get into a, a few of your uh, accomplishments as well later on in this episode, but how how are you? How was Sorrell Bell? Obviously, we, we see what you're up to on social media but how are you on a human level uh you know what if you would asked me this a few months ago i probably would have lied to you and be like oh man i'm good and i really wasn't but today i can sit here and tell you like i'm actually good like i'm really good i feel good i feel motivated i feel inspired i feel i feel jiggy again you know what i'm saying like i feel really good yeah no glazing shit i actually wrote that in my notes to say no glazing shit because i know how people get but when i think about aura man like seeing the way you carry yourself like your art like you just you got aura you got that artist aura bro like oh, something bro, about what? you Thank is just you. like yeah like i don't know like i just see you and i'm like bro i know this dude do some creative ass shit and then you, i mean people could go to your instagram it's like your shit is fucking dope bro thank you yeah. thank you thank you man i really appreciate that from like a deep level because that's what i've been aiming for like the artist aura to be an artist and i think for so long i was afraid to call myself an artist mm -hmm. because I worked around so many artists, right? I helped them and did stuff for them. And I don't think I ever really got seen as an artist. So for me personally, I was like, okay, well, I just, I'm just good at doing shit. Yeah. I'm just good at executing, you know? But now coming into this space where like people are viewing me as an artist, that shit feels good. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. It feels really good. Hey, you're OG in this. You're OG. Yeah. Uh, real quick. We just Dang, you sound old. Show. That's crazy. Nah, nah, nah. But I've been at it for a minute, though. For sure. What you got? What you got? We were going to play this on the TV. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find a remote, so we're going to have to make do. But this content's got to go out. Yo, it's Rob Bell. We live inside the Black Box right now. Wow. Really Dynamite is in the studio. What's going on, man? Man, what's going on? What's going on? So, what's going on? Man, good what does that make you feel like? Seeing that video again, like, what memories come to your mind? Like, what does it make you feel like about everything that's happened since? That, for like, everybody that doesn't know, that was in... Wow. 2015, pulling I believe. Out 2015? 2015. January 2015. So, early 2015. Damn. Damn. Okay, so, that video was with uh, Willie Dynamite. He now goes by Saucy. Saucy Downs. Um... Him and I, we went to school together, went to high school together. And we used to walk home from school and talk about the things that we wanted to do. Damn. And he was, he was uh, like, I think, like a year or two years older than me. And I looked up to him because I'm like, he could rap and he was cool. He had all the dunks and bape stuff, like, early. And I was just like, man, this dude is the coolest motherfucker in the world. And for whatever reason, he gravitated towards me. And um, it was dope. So, like, I started my podcast and... He hit me up and he was like, yo, bro, I want to come on the show. And I'm just like, to go from me thinking you the coolest dude in the world to you wanting to come on my show. And we had this great podcast and it was super dope. And um, that was the studio I had. It was the Black Box. And I met so many people in Vegas there and really built like a foundation for who I am. Um, so that's a special episode. That's really special. And I see him all the time and he's still doing his thing. And like to come fast forward now, and and just be where i'm at is like it's a blessing it's a blessing to be here on a podcast talking to you about my podcast For you know sure. what i'm saying and i'm bringing the show back yeah oh yeah. love to see that love to see that yeah because yeah, you've back. always been uh someone that's very into like <clears throat> talking to people we know you've hosted a few events you had the street interview series yeah um obviously the podcast as well so i'm happy happy to hear that you're gonna come back yes thank you man thank yeah, you yeah. dang that's crazy to see that i know but yeah nine years ago you were really an og that was Man. before everybody was before it was the wave just you've been yeah. at this for a long time i think that's a true testament to not only your determination but just your tenacity your creativity how how much you've evolved as a person as an artist as a creative all the things you've done since it's inspiring to see thank it's inspiring you inspiring to see thank you man thank you you know i was um i want to say i was one of the first people who wasn't a musician 
to have a podcast studio to have his own studio mm. like i got that space and i was like no nah, i want to have a space where people can come to and you know it feels like a real podcast station it feels like underground radio and um yeah man i took my my fast for money and i bought all the equipment painted the room yes sir did everything i was supposed to do um and yeah and that was the spot it was like spots for meetings hang out everything like man i'd bring girls there all type of stuff it was it was a spot yeah, yeah that's yeah. what i'm gonna say it was a spot yes sir but where did all that creativity start like what what in your mind what is the first project you remember being like i, I want to do this whether it was you know around that time or even before <clears throat> like in your childhood um the first the first real project is so crazy i was i was trying to do music and I wasn't necessarily trying to rap. Like, I did rap, like everybody rapped. Yeah. But I had this game, I think it was on, um, I think it was on like PlayStation or something, but it was like MTV's Music Generator or Music Maker. And you can like make beats on there. No shit. Yeah, and I thought it was the flyest game ever. And like, honestly, that's how I learned, quote unquote, how to produce music because it had drums and you had like melodies and harmonies and feels and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, what is this? But they had demo versions of the song, so you can see lead drums, um, uh, breakdown, pre-chorus, the vamp at the end. So I learned the arrangement of a song and how to produce it and how to build it up. And yeah, it was just a dope game. And then they just, you know, gaming continued and stuff. But I didn't have no real equipment at that time. But I think it was trying to do music. And so from there, it was filmmaking after that i had bought a camera i was trying to do like any type of film project i could like recording stuff i was writing like small scripts and everything trying to get people to be in it i had one handheld sony camera and i thought i was going to change the world and you know not really knowing that you have to get a ton of people to like work on a film with you right and it's not as easy as like you stand there you're gonna say this and i was just like yo that's all i need i got a camera i'm gonna just tell somebody what to do and we're gonna do it and that shit did not work it did not work yeah. at all. So um, I was always on Spike Lee. Like, I was on him very early in my life. Him, John Singleton, um, Martin Scorsese, all these amazing filmmakers. And I think when I got to high school, I was like, okay. One thing I noticed is that when I would watch their films, it's like written, directed, and produced. And I was like, damn, they're not only directors, but they're real craftsmen. Right. So I started writing. And I took the Spike Lee because his language was so crazy to me. Like it was, it was brash. It was like curse words. It was black and soulful. And I was like, I think I can, I think I can mimic that. So I wrote this film. I think I was like a junior in high school. And um, me and my boy Sean, we wrote it. We wrote it in a notebook. And like, I would write one day, and I would give it to him. He didn't know what I wrote. And then he would come bring it back to me. And I would tell him, like, yo, I wrote about X, Y, and Z. And um, we were putting, like, exterior, interior shots in, B-roll, not knowing nothing about this, but just, like, from reading scripts. And, like, we would download them online mm -hmm. and just mimic it. It's like, oh, exterior shot, house, uh, side of house, whatever. And I was like, okay, I know what that means, so let me just mimic that for what I'm doing. So I had... um. I had this class in high school and it was just kind of like, it was like an entrepreneurial class and the teacher was super cool. And um, so I said, you know, I was like, yo, can I, can I give you something to read? And I gave it to him. Now remind you, it had hella cussing in it. Right. Cause I'm like, I think I'm baby Spike. So I give him the script and I was like, all right, well, either I'm gonna get in trouble or he's gonna tell me like, you know, tighten it up and all this stuff. And I, I waited like a week, like I didn't even, I went to class, didn't say nothing about it. I was like, all right, so now it's time to go. And he um, he told me to stay after. And I was like, okay. And I said, all right, this is the moment. Like, he's going to tell me if the shit's good or bad. And he's like, who taught you how to put words together like this? And it just made me feel so good. I was like, I can do this. I can do this. And he was like, the way that you you craft these characters and the way that you're able to build up each character's dialogue. And remind you, I'm like 16, 17. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's when I kind of knew. I was like, okay, he's not going to lie to me. 
So I got something. And then from there, I, I, I thought about going to film school. So that was like the early stages of, Creativity. of creating. Me, Ain't yeah. that crazy? Like the things you get away with under the guise of art. Like yeah. if, if you was just writing curse words in your notebook and you were like, hey, look at this. You'd be like, you need some help, buddy. You're going <laughs> yeah, to have to stand there. Yeah, but it's like you put it together. It's a, it's a nice scene. He's like, who taught you how to put together these words, young <laughs> yeah. man? So, yeah, but man, that's so powerful. And um, I guess ever since then, you've just been running. And that's actually uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is mm-hmm. it almost feels like whenever you upload these reels and for people that don't know, go check it out uh, on Instagram. But whether it's a car shot or you or the people that you frequent like you're always around your friends you're always collaborating with the people yeah. that you you're really close with which i love it feels like watching a short film like I, I remember going to like art museums and you know these people try to tell you like oh well this color is this blue because this is the emotion they're trying to portray and it never really it doesn't really mean anything to me i guess i don't appreciate art in that way or you know, sometimes you read uh, literature and people say, oh, look at the look at the way the cadence or look at the words they're using, the picture they're trying to the paint. And although your word, your uh, reels don't have people actually speaking in them, it feels like I'm watching a short film. It feels like Thank I'm watching a little Thank movie you. like I, I yeah. get what you're trying to tell me. I feel it. It's not just, oh, I'm looking at it. It's nice. It's like I feel some way by looking at this video. And that's such a hard skill to learn. I just wanted to ask you, like, where did you learn that? How did you, how to first, how did you, like, know that that was a thing? And second, how did you sharpen that skill? Man, Spike Lee and John Singleton, mm. those guys, man, watching Spike's movie, movies over and over and over, watching John Singleton's movie, watching their interviews and um, a bunch of other filmmakers, but those two in, in like, particular, and um, and just really watching how they provoked emotion. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, oh, they would do that to get this. Or the way Spike Lee has this thing of like, he'll bring a song in at a certain moment Mm -hmm. and you'll feel it. And it's like, it's more than the score of the film. It's almost like dialogue. And I just started noticing little things like that. And I really, really always enjoyed storytelling. And um, yeah, so now I think in my stuff, as much as I would like to, you know, hit them over the head with like the cool shit it's so hard for me not to tell a story even with photos like if i'm taking pictures or something i'm like what what story is this telling Mm -hmm. like i'm just i'm a storyteller so it's hard for me to get around it and just kind of like i'm just gonna do this today yeah you know so i'm just like i really want to make you feel something right and uh, that brings a question to me so how do you find that story like let's say you're looking at a scene what aspects are you looking for to in order to find that story um, everything from the music, what the person's wearing, the location, uh, how much sunlight we got, um, how much time we have. Cause like sometimes like all this shit is not perfect. Cause we're indie, like I'm an indie filmmaker. Yeah, so of course I can't just run out of place and like, Oh, we got 12 hours to shoot. Or I can't tell the sun like, yo, I need you to stay up for another. That sun ain't no hole. The sun be leaving. Yeah. Like when I'm shooting outside, I get so frustrated. Cause like. It's unpredictable. You know, you, you think you're shooting from one way and then like the sun is facing the opposite way and you got to set the tripod up, do all this stuff, figure out the scene and then that bitch is gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, sometimes it's like pre-planned of like, okay, this is what I'm going to do and if it's on the run, it's like... No pun intended. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Then it's like, all right, this is what I have to work with. This is what I can do. This is what I can make someone feel right now. So that's how I try to like I just try to put something in a pot and just make it taste good, you know. So, uh, let, let's say about sound design, right? Do you ever, what are you looking for sound design? Like, do you go through a lot of music that you listen to? Like, how do you do? How do you grow that music in order to find the right Ooh. right song? Sound design is so crazy, man. Like, I'm, I'm gonna say this. So when I was in film school, uh, and actually before I went to film school, remember I had a teacher who was like, "Yo, you have a gift." Mm-hmm. So then I wrote something else, and he's like yo what is this and then i would let other people read it and they were like you're pretty good so never being cocky but i was just like okay i know i can write i know i can write and so when i finally got to film school it was like oh we're gonna learn about lighting and sound design and i was like i don't care about this shit 
I'm like, yo, we're the camera. And I just want to make films. Like, somebody's going to do the light. Somebody's going to do the sound. I'm right. going to tell this amazing story. Fast forward. Sound design is actually what I'm studying right now. I'm just like, I need, I need sound design to tell a better story. So any filmmakers out there, like, please pay attention early. If someone's trying to teach you something, learn it, take it in, um, and appreciate the beginnings of it. So right now it's like, I'm listening for drums, keys, um, things that go along with the scene. Like if someone's walking, if I'm shooting someone's eyes, uh, how does it look outside? Like what sounds is going to resonate with that particular scene? You know, so I'm just like a little more pre-planning as far as like sound now, but um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really locked in on learning more about it right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because to me, those are like the little details. It's almost like you're cooking this meal and it has all these fancy ingredients and colors and it's plated perfectly, but then it has no salt. You're like, yeah. if it had salt, it would be so much better. To me, mm -hmm. that's like something subtle, the sounds, but even just like like this video, uh, the one you just posted recently of LA at nighttime with all oh, the man. lights, the buildings. I literally, I'm scrolling and I'm seeing this video. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like this shit is like, I don't <laughs> know. You. It literally looks like a fucking movie. And I'm like, bro, this is insane. And then, yeah, just to see it, like, man, like unravel in front of me. Like every time you post, like it just gets better and better and better. But you've had the chance to collaborate with a few big companies. Mm -hmm. um, I think you worked with Fuji before. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. How did, How, did um, man, How did that come about? How did that come about? Man. Shout out to Austin from Yesterday's Fits. I went to the store and he was talking. Like, we always have like these really good talks. Like, I'll go in there for five minutes to grab something and we have like a 30, 40 minute like deep conversation. And I love him for that. I really appreciate all the game. And he was like, bro, why don't you hit up Fuji? And I'm thinking like, boy, I'm not finna just hit up. I can't just hit up Fuji. What are you right. talking about? He was like, my boy who plays in the NFL, he just hit up Fuji and they sent him a camera. And I'm like, your boy who plays in the NFL. Just... Right, yeah, yeah. And he was like, just do it. What's the worst that could happen? I go home. I hit up Fuji. And they replied. And they were like, what do you want? And I was just like, wow. That simple. That simple. That simple. And the timing couldn't have been better because I used that camera mm -hmm. to do the Lids event. And so it just it worked out so smooth. And shout out to Fuji. Um building a great relationship with them now and about to run it back so it's like it's super cool shout out to them and um yeah i never even thought like what it's crazy yeah the, well when we met you were just uh you were emailing uh sony, sony. yeah sony yeah. to get to get yeah. a camera and that's literally man i wish we would have put that series together after we it, it was just too early we didn't yeah. have the, the pieces set, the, but we want to we want to make that happen. But that's one of the scenes that's still so vivid in my mind is that when we met you, we had a conversation about that, like emailing Sony, trying to get a camera, and then you made it happen with mm -hmm. Fuji, and now you're about to run it back again, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and I sent Sony a beautiful email. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was so proud of myself. Yeah, I think no, we read it that day. No chat yeah, GPT, we, we all just down. all me. Yeah. Man. Maybe, maybe in the future. Once maybe, they see you blowing up, they're so. going to be at your door like, oh, oh we just saw the email. It just got delivered. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think so. For sure. I think so. <laughs> but you mentioned Lids, mm -hmm. and that is just insane. I mean, we all grew up going to Lids, getting hats, yeah. and you were on this enormous electronic billboard on the strip. Crazy. You know, to us, is like the, like when artists go to uh, Times Square and they see their yeah. picture on Bro, the Spotify thing. Crazy. It's like, what? Crazy. I'm really on there? Like, how did, how did that feel? Man, it felt so damn good. I'm not going to lie to you. It so before the event I was like, "All right, let me let me check Instagram and see what they're doing up there if anybody's there." And I saw like this girl post her picture with her hat on, and I was like, "What?" Cuz I hadn't I've been there one time, but I think it was like to pick up the hat for mm -hmm. the the competition thing. And um the billboard had random stuff on it, so I wasn't paying attention to it. And they were like, oh, yeah, also the, the pictures are going to be on the billboard. And I was just like, what? And it just kept going and going and going. That shit felt good. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, even the way it came about. So for me personally, yeah, it felt incredible. Incredible. I think I was the, I'm going to stop saying I'm not a photographer because 
Jasmine who get mad at me, but I, I'm a photographer now, okay? But at the time, um, good friend of mine, Jordan, he we're downtown and he goes, would you consider yourself a photographer? And he's a photographer, someone I respect a lot. And I was like, damn, how do I answer this? Like, I don't know if it's a trick question. And I was like, I don't know, bro. Like, I just enjoy taking pictures and this and that. And he's like, okay, well, I just thought to ask because Lids is having this photo series and they're looking for photographers. And I was like, what do you have to do? And he's like, well, you have to photograph someone in a hat. I was like, that's it? He was like, yeah. I was like, I'll do it. He was like, okay. So I hit the guy up and he was like, yeah, this is what you got to do. And you go to the store, get a hat. Um, and I'm like a super procrastinator. I'm getting better. I'm getting better, but I'm gonna be real with y'all. So I took my pictures the very last day mm. and I get ready to go take my pictures. The weather was amazing. I go to Sunset Park. It's windy as shit. Fuck. It's windy as That's hell. I'm talking about like dust flying up everything. And I got my sons with me. I'm just like, yo. And they're like, ah, oh, damn my eyes. And I'm like trying not to get mad because I'm like, it's not their fault, you know, that I procrastinated. And I was like, we gonna take these pictures. Yeah. Like, like some, some Joe Jackson, I was like, look, I know that wind blowing, but we gonna take these pictures. <laughs> and um, took the pictures. And as I took them, I was like, these are, these are gonna be the ones. And I submitted them, and they loved them, and we went there, and the event was crazy tight, and it was so good, and um, yeah, yeah. Man, that's crazy. Like, to think, if I mean, I'm sure, like, if you were to ask the Sorrel of a year before that, it would be like, you know, one day you're going to work with Lids, like, what would you say? I would have been like, I hope so. Yeah. Like, shit, I really hope so. But it's crazy how, like, just all these pieces come together and like you said all at the right time because you used the camera that you had just got yeah. to get those pictures yeah 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 and had i not sent that email to fuji i wouldn't have had that camera you know and had i not said yes to taking the pictures i wouldn't have been a part of that amazing leads event you yeah know? yeah so i think it was cool and i feel like still now i think i'm a little bit more established but at the time when i saw the names on the list i'm like photographer photographer like all these people that i respect and i'm just like me me yeah i was like oh man like i hope they don't i hope they don't look at me like what is he doing here yeah, like, yeah. who who put him a part of this yeah and it was all love man. i think i built some of the best relationships at that event like people who i've been looking at for years were like yo Sarah, man, it's good to see you it's good to finally meet you and i love yourself and they just treated me like i was one of them yeah and it was amazing so I think that was a testament to let me know, like, bro, just, just go for it. Stop being scary. You gotta stop being scary and do this shit. Yeah. Like, what are you, what are you afraid of? You know. And I think out here in Vegas, we get so caught up with like, oh, I don't want to. Me and Jasmine say it, like, I don't want to copy this person, or I don't want to this person to feel like I'm stepping on their toes. But motherfuckers don't care. At all. They don't care. At all. You know, so it's like you might as well do this shit. Especially yeah. if you love it and you like it and you care about it. Not for sure. Just do it. Make your own lane. Exactly. And either they don't care, and if they care, then why are they that why do they feel some type of ways? Like why yeah, would you they, even care if they care at that point? They gonna have to get over it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like there's more than enough for everybody to go around for to go around for everybody. Way so more. Um, but that's good. I think that's a lesson for all the young creators, people that aspire to do big things, like just shoot. The worst just, you can do man, is miss, man. The bro, worst Sony can do is just not it. reply. It's not like they're going to send That's back it. an email and be like, you're never going to make it. You should never <laughs> yeah. send this email. Nah, like, Who are you to think you could ever contact us? Like, no, you know? Nah, just so, keep it going. Just keep moving. Keep Stay persistent. Stay at it. And you got it. For sure. But what uh, what companies or what brands would you want to work with? Oh, man. I if you could with, pick five to work with. Uh, Porsche. Uh-huh. Um... Nike, Mercedes, um, I don't want to say another car company, but, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let me see, so Porsche, Nike, um, Doritos, I know people might think it's funny, but Doritos, does yeah. they do some tight shit, um, 
Man. Who else? Who else? Who else? Disney. Disney um, would be crazy. And Kith. Kith. Kith, yeah, for sure. Kith would be dope. For sure. Now, I can see you like on a Super Bowl commercial, Dorito Super Bowl commercial, like bro, short I film. I would love it. Bro, that would be so sick. Yeah. Yeah. And I would love, I'm going to throw this into the universe. I want to be the State Farm dude. I think I would kill it. I yeah. think I would thrive at that. You, yeah, I think you would. I think I would. You like, got that personality Shout out to the guy who's it. doing it. I forgot yeah. his name, but like, yeah, I would. Oh, he's do making that. so much money. You oh, know how nuts. everybody knows him? Like yeah. Travis Scott dapping him up, like all these athletes dapping Bro. him up. Like, he's I would hit. love to do that. Yeah. I'd love to do it. That would be sick. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of personal projects, things that you're working on now, mm-hmm. things that are in the horizon, maybe something that you're like, oh, maybe, but it's not time yet. What what's on your mind? Um, films, films for sure. Like full length or short films? Yeah, both. both? Uh, the plan is to get to a feature length, mm-hmm, right? right? Like so that's why I'm like doing all these reels, learning all this like sound design, lighting, um, learning about casting, working with teams, all that stuff is to do a feature. You know what I'm saying? So that's the big thing. Um, what other projects? Some events. I got some cool events like. That I want to do things like that. Um, let me see what else. What else? What else? There's a lot of stuff, man. There's a lot of stuff that just be going on in here, and I'm For like, sure. oh, I want to do that. I want to do this, and it's like something new every single day. But I think the main goal right now is to get to the place to be able to do films. Yeah, I think yeah. you would kill it in that. It's just a matter of like finding the pieces in. We, I know I, I'm the same. Like I have so many things, and I always make the same excuse. Like I don't have time. It's like. It'll come together though. Yeah. As long as you step forward yeah, into it, it'll come the, together. You put the time in, you got it. Yeah, for sure. For whatever, what advice would you have for young creators who want to get started? I guess what equipment, like what, what are the like the bare bones necessities that you need to to get started? Thick skin. Yeah, that's the main thing because you're gonna have so many people around you telling you what they think you should do, what's cool, what's not cool, what's not gonna make money, what's not profitable. But it's like you got to do literally what you want to do. And if it doesn't work out and you realize it doesn't work for you, cool. But you can't let someone else determine that. And I think as far as like gear, in 2024, man, you can, you got a laptop, you got a camera, you have a microphone, you got a TV show. You know what I'm saying? Like you got a camera, you're a filmmaker. You know what I'm saying? I think you can do whatever you want. But I say... You get a nice Sony, like a nice hybrid, um, especially for people who like buy a bunch of shoes and clothes and all that stuff. Bro, buy some gear. I'm telling you, invest in yourself. Buy you some gear so you don't have to worry about nothing because that was my biggest downfall is I had all these ideas, but I had no gear. I was like, oh, man, I just wrote this. And it's like I have to depend on someone else to shoot it mm-hmm. when they can, if they want to, if they even like it. And if they don't like it, are they going to put their all into it? So just go buy you some gear for any filmmaker. I would say try to pick you up like uh, a Sony, at least A3, a Sony A7 III. Um, that'll get you where you need to be at. Um, podcasters, you know, you can get damn near any mic. Um, you can record off the phone. It doesn't matter. Just do it. You know what I'm saying? So just, just use it. whatever you have right now until you like get to a place where you're like, all right, I need better stuff. No, for sure. You don't got to start off like, ooh, I got to have this and got to have that. No, you just got to, you know, bare minimal, but do your best. Be creative as possible. And just be a student. Be a student. Take little bits from people that you like and say like, okay, I only have this, but I think I I can manipulate it enough to do all these different things, you know? Yeah, for sure. I think we can definitely tell like, by all the people that you mentioned that you were inspired by, I've always said the same. I read a book like that um, back when I used to read. Um, mm-hmm. But I was in college and I read a book on that. And it it was a, basically about how nothing is really original, right? Mm-hmm. Everything you can think of is just an adaptation of something else. And if not, it's an adaptation of something that comes from nature. So yeah. we didn't create it. And that's really what it is, is you pick your inspirations. I'm not saying copy them, but mimic them, take the 50 60 70 80 percent that you like about them change it up get the rest from somebody else and just put it together in your own formula and you'll have something 
You'll have oh, your own sure. style eventually. Yeah, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Yeah. Trust me, it's gonna work. Yeah. It's gonna work out. For so sure. I, I feel like the process of creating, right? It's about trying something new and then maybe there's some part you didn't like and then you try it again and you try it again until you finally get something that you're truly proud of. Yeah. What do you think is a good a good advice for filmmakers in that process of like trying, failing, trying, failing until they finally get to that spot where they feel satisfied with the end product? Ooh, that's a good one because I'm I'm going through that myself. Um, I think comparison, right? Like when you're learning filmmaking, there's so many things that you want to get right. And myself like i'm surrounded by nothing but creatives like damn near all my friends are creatives yeah so everyone like somebody the other day hit me and was like i woke up to the message and it was like hey you ever thought about investing in a gimbal if you had a gimbal these shots would be smoother and i'm just like i know that like i just don't have a gimbal so i did what i could but yeah. someone's always telling me what i should be doing or what i shouldn't do or what i should have did better and it's like i'm learning I'm learning. And sometimes, you know, I know I don't have certain things. So I'm like, okay, this shot might be a little shaky, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to do it, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I wish I had a fucking gimbal too, but I don't right now. So I just got to do this. But um, to the question is like, yeah, just understand that you're learning and just keep going at your pace because you can't, you can't rush your process to satisfy somebody else. And I think that's what we do a lot of times. It's not even us. We'll understand, like, I'm eventually going to get it. Or, oh, I'm going to try to see it. Oh, I'm going to try this again. But it's like, we're trying to satisfy somebody else. For sure. Most of the time. And once you stop doing that, you'll be smooth. I shot this video Sunday. And I saw a reference. And I was like, ooh, I want to try to mimic that. Shot came out fire. But now that I'm trying to do it and edit it, I cannot get that shit. It's been a week. And I was, like, down on myself. And mm -hmm. I had to tell myself that. Nobody knows I shot it. Nobody knows I'm working on it. Nobody knows what the reference looks like. So when I put it out, people are just going to be like, they're going to like it or not like it. Right. But they're not going to be like, ah, oh, bro, it doesn't look like what you showed me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they're not. They don't care. That's the one thing. People don't care as much as we think they do. They don't care as much as you care. Yeah, they don't care as much as you care. Yeah. And just as much as we think they do. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the little subtle nuances of like, oh man i didn't get it like this unless you tell someone they won't even notice exactly they won't even notice yep no nah, so it's like just in learning just don't try to please nobody else okay yeah. i think that's good advice for people yeah, yeah for sure and i think the other thing too about like the equipment is you have to earn your stripes you're not gonna fucking have i mean 99 percent of us are not gonna have the best top of the line equipment as soon as we get started is you have to learn you have to earn your stripes you have to earn your stripes with that shitty mic that you have to hold a certain way so it yeah. doesn't fucking make yeah. noises you have to earn your stripes and how you know trying to fucking mentally focus so your shot can be steady with no gimbal you gotta earn it and that yeah. will teach you so many skills You're, you'll pick up so many things along the way that when you finally do get that equipment oh you're at a, a whole another oh, level man man listen i for anybody out there watching i just got my sony yeah i just got it before that i was i was hitting homies up and sending i'm talking about like i'm getting on the phone like hey man listen this is a crazy idea but it's gonna be cool and we're gonna change the game and at some point you get tired of pitching shit to other people right. just so they can shoot it with their nice camera yep you know so i was like by some way i'm gonna get the camera i need and me and my boy john we were trying to get this camera for so long and so many things kept going wrong and finally one thing went right and i got that damn camera and it's been on it's been on but it took me a while it took me i want to say two years maybe you know and it may not seem like a long time but when you're in it and you're trying to create and you oh, know yeah. you're like damn if i had that camera i can do that or i could do this so it's that two years was a long two years for sure but especially when you you can only ask for so many favors yeah exactly you, know, you feel so like you're a favors. nuisance but it's like i mean you correct me if i'm wrong all the skills you learned with what you were working with before now you're like oh i have so many ideas and now i can actually execute a lot of these things and you just feel much more confident because you're like i don't care what equipment is in front of me i'm gonna tell the story the way oh, yeah. i want to tell a story yeah yeah one of the biggest compliments now people come up to me and they go 
did you shoot this off the camera or the phone? Because I used to shoot off the phone a lot. So now I'm like, people got used to me shooting such good quality off the phone that they can't, can't even, even tell. tell the difference. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. Like, people don't really even know. Like, I'll shoot off my camera, which costs whatever amount. And I'm just like, what? No, I shot this off the camera, fool. What are you talking about? <laughs> the phone. <laughs> but that just goes to show, like, the consumer is not as tapped into the, you know, the vision as we think they are. Yeah. And that's one thing, too. Your friends and family are not your consumers. Mm-mm. They're not. If you drop something, they're not going to go stand in line for it. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, friends and family, they do not count. Yeah. So, don't. actually, it brings up a question. Since your friends and your family, they're not your consumers, mm-hmm. how do you build that initial base? Like, how do you build that initial, like, group of people who really mess with your stuff that yeah, are, core like... Core audience. Core audience, yeah. And then how do you build off of that? Man, you got to go out and tap in with the people. That's it. Like you can you can sit around creatives all day and get your ego stroked and they're like, yeah, bro, that's hard and this and that. But to go to someone that you don't know, that's that's you know interesting. So for me, what I do is I'm online a lot. So I'll I'll find people and I'll just be like, yo, love your stuff or hey, I got this thing I'm working on. Like, can you check it out for me? And I'll send it to them and then that's how we develop a bond. So from in person, it's the same thing. Like I just you know introduce myself tell them who I am, what I do. And it's like, now I'm bringing them into my world. And it's like different from my friends and family. Cause it's like, this is person who, who knows nothing about me, mm-hmm. who only wants to be a consumer. They don't want to work with me. They don't want to be a collaborator. They just want to see Sorrell Bell win at whatever he's doing. Right. They got no stake in the game besides just enjoying what you're putting out. Yeah. So it's like, you really got to get out there and meet people and just like build and introduce yourself and, be vulnerable like hey this is what i'm doing hey can i show you this hey you know i know you don't know me but hey and it's a lot of hey 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 but you got to do it you got to get out there and see people and i'm i'm always out always meeting people um as everybody knows i talk my ass off so you know i'm always talking to somebody whether it's here in la and yeah you just got to go out there and just meet people you know because you can't depend on who you know because that there's no expansion in that exactly you know and how did you put together your circle? You were mentioning it even in this interview earlier, how most of your friends are creatives. How did yeah. that come about? Is it just the places you were or is it, um, yeah, I guess, how, how did you put together your circle? Um, I don't even know, man. I think it just came about, I think, from the early days of, of working with uh, Rico Black and Mac Neely and Ray, it was just like I was around a group of musicians who were around groups of musicians but we were just friends like really good friends and then before you know it it's like oh that's my producer friend or oh she draws that's my art friend and and then you're like damn like everybody i know does something and now just blessed to like have really good people who are into art music fashion and stuff like that but they're also just really good people you know like jasmine jasmine is to me i'm I'm like the biggest fan of jasmine you know what I'm saying? I'm like the hugest fan of her. And she does a lot of stuff. But at the same time, she's she's just Jasmine. Like just a dope individual who knows a lot about a lot of things and just a cool person. And the same with um John, amateur John. He's we went to high school together. And I've always just loved him. Like even in high school, I thought he was the coolest dude ever. And we didn't do shit in high school. Right. So fast forward, I see him and he's like, Tell me about these ideas. And he told me about an idea that was so crazy. It was it was crazier than anything I had ever thought of. So I was blown away. I was like, man, typically I have the crazy ideas, but I was like, shit. And as I'm standing there, I said, I want to be next to you when you bring this to into fruition. And it just happened that way. And like we're like the like the dynamic trio. So I'm saying we're always together. And it's just a really, really dope ass friendship and I think just from there, you just, you know, you meet people who you align with. And sometimes you meet people who you don't align with, but that's just life. But, yeah, it just kind of happens. Like, you just fall into these creative communities. And I think once you do something, whether it's, like, music, photography, fashion, you kind of just attract those people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like me and you, like, we just, it just works. Yeah, for sure. You know sure. what I'm saying? It just works. Yeah. I think it's it's good and it's showing how much the city's evolving. Last time you were on, we talked about how, 
you know, things in LA or things in, you know, places where there is a little bit more of a larger creative scene. There is a little bit more of a people in podcasting or street photography or filmmaking. These things kind of happen more often, these organic friendships and relationships. And I love seeing that, like to me, just seeing people here in Vegas, like seeing these people work together, obviously it's a friendship. It's not just a, a business relationship, but having that happen organically it means a lot of things are going to get created here and it means more people are going to get inspired we're going to have a bigger generation coming forward of filmmakers photographers podcasters business owners entrepreneurs and it makes me happy genuinely happy oh yeah it's it's great to see we once again me and jasmine were talking about that this morning Mm -hmm. we talked about this morning how like the city is growing and the art scene here is growing and sometimes it feels like it's super slow, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's happening. And I just want, I just want to make sure that we're the ones who are like on top when, when it when it happens. You know what I'm saying? Versus the outsiders coming in exactly, and like, yeah. now there's a new podcast studio on the strip and like this and that. But it's like, damn, we've been doing this for so long and we just got outed by right some lames with money. Right, man, I'll be damned. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't. I don't see it happening. Not because. No, obviously they got a lot of money, but I, I just feel like we're so close to one another. Like whether you live on the east side or Henderson or Summerlin or North Las Vegas yeah. or down in the Arts District, like it, the city's so small. We all fuck with each other, even though, you know, we be getting on each other's nerves. Like we all fuck <laughs> yeah. with each other. Like I don't see that happening easily, at least. Like yeah. I, I can never have somebody come in and be like, oh yeah, where the this and that. And I'm like, nah, I'm gonna fuck with Sorrell first because yeah. I know he's been out here putting in the work, and he's from where I'm from. So how would it ever work that I'm gonna go somewhere else instead of with family? Yeah. You know? Hey, as long as we all keep that mentality, we're gonna be straight. Exactly. We're gonna be straight. I like that's that. hard. Yeah. Like a lot of people are gonna yeah. change up. We'll we'll see it happen. But uh, <sighs> as long as the real ones stay solid, man, we're gonna be yeah, we're gonna be good. We're gonna, we're gonna be, be good, good no matter what. Regardless. Yeah. Yeah, but what about like family life? How do you how how difficult is it to balance the because being a creative, right? You work on your schedule, but you don't work on your schedule mm-hmm. because you have to manage all these moving pieces. Like you said, even the sun, you know, the sun be yeah. coming up and setting right away. So how do you balance having that creative life with the family life? Man, I'd be sitting here lying to y'all if I said it, it's not hard at times. It's man. Sometimes it's just like, cause what I'm trying to do is like goal, passion driven. And you know, sometimes I have to take the kids with me and whether it's hot or like, I got to stop at the store to get them snacks to that's, that's like the payment, right? I got to compensate them with like smoothies right. or whatever the hell is going to keep them good and quiet and not fighting with each other. And, um, it, sometimes it's difficult. It's a lot of times it's difficult, but you know, so I think it's just like, we're here. I'm granted this opportunity. So it's like either I'm going to complain about it or I'm going to make this shit happen no matter what. You know, so just just making the time to make sure that they know like, okay, oh man, you know, dad's super cool and he does all this cool stuff and he has these really cool friends. They also know like, yo, he's going to help me with my project. Doesn't matter what he has going on. If I have a project, my dad's going to help me. If I need to get better at football, my dad's going to stop what he's doing and he's going to help me. If I have something at school, my dad's going to make it to it. You know what I'm saying? So just making sure that they know like, yo, I'm here no matter what. Not like, oh yeah, well let me knock this out and then I'll be there. It's like, no, nah, it's I'm here no matter what. You know? So just it's a learning learning thing, you know what I'm saying? Just have to learn how to like balance and blend the two. And then also times it's sacrifices where I have to tell them like, you know, it's a Saturday and I'd love to hang out with y'all and, and go do cool stuff, but I got to go film. Like I got a free day. I got to go film. The weather's great. Everybody I need is available. I got to go take this. You know what I'm saying? So just making sure that there's a good, healthy balance. So when I do choose to go do those things, they understand. Right. They it's not just like, like, damn, you ain't never here. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like they know. They yeah. know what I do. And are they gravitating more towards the creative thing, seeing you do all that? Or like you said, they play football. Are you, mm-hmm. are you seeing them go down the football route or the movie maker route? Man, I don't even know with these kids. They just, they're, they're different. I think all these, like this new generation of kids, they have so much at their disposal. Like, like my son Zayden, he told me, he's like, dad, I think I want to be a streamer. He's like, I think I'm going to be a cold streamer. And I, I had nothing to say. Cause I was like, 
there are streamers making millions of dollars right Bro, now. They it's contracts. a real thing. It's a contracts. real thing. So, NBA contracts, streamers. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, he was confident. He was like, I'm going to be the coldest streamer. And I was like, bet. Like, what we got to do? And he was showing me um, the setups that he wants and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow, he's serious about this. And then he'll switch and be like, yeah, I think I'm going to be a photographer. And he's like, ooh, that's a good shot right there. So I'm just like, I don't know which way he's going to go because, like, Zayden is really talented at a lot of stuff. And he's very nonchalant. Like, he's super nonchalant. And then you have Zion, who's who's a little rambunctious. Like, he's just kind of good at a lot of stuff, but he knows that he's good at a lot of stuff. Mm. So I don't know. I think there's going to be some form of creativity in there, though. In some way, shape, or form. Yeah. How right. could there not be? I feel like you're around yeah. it so much. Like, yeah. whatever they end up doing, it'll be with a creative twist. I think so. Yeah. I think so, somehow, no matter what. And I'm going to be right there to, like, cheer them on, give them whatever they need. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you want to stream? All right, bet. Let's set it up. Oh, yeah, for How sure. you want to do it? Let's get your YouTube. Let's get you a banner. Let's get you, you know what I'm saying, all the dopest stuff to make sure you're the dopest version of whatever you want to do. Yeah, execute you know? whatever you got in your brain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Uh, you've also been hosting a lot of stuff recently, mm-hmm. uh, panels, uh, conversations. I guess that ties in with you wanting to start the interviews back up. But what's that been like? Oh, man, as we all know, like I said, I can talk my ass off. Um, so I just enjoy, as much as I enjoy talking, I enjoy listening to people's stories. And I think that everyone has a story to tell. And I feel like every artistic person or creative person needs an outlet because whether you're Drake level or just starting off, there's certain things that you want to say that you want to articulate and you want to get off. And a lot of times we didn't have a place to to do that. So now having that, having the space to give someone that platform, it just means so much to me. You know, it means so much to me just to be able to like sit down with someone, talk to them, hear their story, hear why they do it, how they do it, you know, and it's just really cool to me. Yeah. I think it, Man, it's crazy how like you were doing it nine years ago, nine years later. Crazy, right? Again, crazy, crazy. Yeah. But yeah, congratulations, man, on all your Thank success. You. Thank you for giving us your time. Is there anything else you want to uh, tell the public? Um, nah. I mean, just you know, we here. We're gonna keep this thing going. We're gonna keep it rocking. Um, I got a lot of stuff to look forward to. Um. Snowed Up is returning. Fine. So, I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snowed Up is returning. Love Snowed Up, um, yeah. This has been a lot of work trying to work on getting it to where I wanted to get to, but I have not forgot about it. I have not abandoned it. Abandoned it. Um, and it's, it's coming back. It's snowed Up is coming back for man, sure. We're going to have to like, get, get a, get a cave. We're going to have to put an event together here, man, just to have Hell Snowed yeah, Up man. here. Yeah, for yeah, sure. definitely. I got y'all for sure. Appreciate it. Let them know where they can find you on social media. Man, social media, um, Instagram, TikTok, threads, Twitter is all the same. I'm Sorrell Bell. Um, I'm on Instagram a lot, all day. You can Instagram me and DM me probably faster than you can text me. But I'm on there all day. Um, yeah, or catch me in person. I'm always out, always with Jazz or John or, you know what I'm saying, somebody. So if you see me, say what's up. Alfredo, let them know where they can find you. Oh, yeah, uh, find me on Fredo's Fix, Fredo's Fix Live, and Up Dogs. Yo. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode, man. Make sure to follow Instagram at ontherun.pod, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Make sure you go follow, subscribe, rate the show five stars. It really helps us out a lot, man. Yo. It's been Sarah Bell on the On The Run Podcast. We'll see y'all next week for another episode, man. Peace. Yeah.